This is Joe from Art Alien TV and today I'm going to be showing you the supposed comet called Atlas. Now I'm going to show you the clips first and then I'm going to show you the raw images and then I'm going to show you some of the stuff on Twitter. Lots of people have been posting this. I posted some clips of it last night which have gone viral and lots of other people have shared them and nicked them and reshared them. These are a mixture of images here. I've got the left and right images and I've also got the Brighton versions that they put out as well as the, the black and white sort of darker ones. Now, these are taken by the NAVCAM on the Perseverance rover, which is in Jezero Crater, looking up as the comet has streaked past up in the, the night sky, okay? Now, it's travelling pretty quick. Some people have estimated it's going something like 130,000 miles an hour or something like that. I don't know. Um, it's going pretty fast. So this is the basic clip, right? This is the left one. Does that look like a comet to you? It looks nothing like one to me. That's for sure, okay? Now, I'm going to flick through some of these. So this is left, this is right. I'm going to flick between them. We've got left, right, left, right, left, right, okay? The left one's slightly grainier. But you can see that it looks like a cylinder. Now, bear in mind that this was taken at night time, so the EV levels were turned up on the camera to capture this. In reality, it's going to be about half as long as this, right? but it's still cylinder shaped. Now I've got negatives of these. You can actually see there's a circle there and a circle there. And it looks like it's got a hollow end. All right? This is the left one and this is the right one. You can see that in both of them. The left one's slightly clearer, just there. So the thing is cylinder shaped, but not as long as this, okay? Because obviously if it's traveling pretty fast it, it's going to cause streaking in the image now this is the smaller clips i did initially which are 1k or uh, 1080p right this is left and this is the full size one right full size this is um right smaller now this is these are the brighton ones and this one's been enhanced i've darkened this this is what it looks like in the brighton one now what what nasa have done on the page is they've actually got... Now, this is just the left camera. There, there are a lot more than this, right? This is Sol 1643, okay? And in each set, there are 16. So this is the raw image, and you can see it here. So, you know, I haven't put this on here. This is not me doing this. This is straight from the rover. Now, this image was literally taken yesterday. So this is brand new. The Perseverance rover images are updated much quicker on the website than, than other missions, okay? Like literally one or two days later you get them. Here's the bright one here. This is, this, I think, the same set of images that have just been brightened up. I don't think these are taken separately. It's just the same set and they've super brightened them. And it appears as a very bright cylinder shape or oblong shape, okay? Just there, right? So that's the left one, that's the right one. But look at the actual shapes here. We've got, a, we've got a cylinder shape. And like I said, this thing isn't as long as this, okay? In reality, it's probably about half as long. So it's about, it would come to about there, right? Now, let's look at the Brighton one. This is the raw Brighton one. The smaller one here, you can see this is the same object, but it's been super brightened and had the contrast turned right up. And you can see it's all kind of pixelated, which is what happens when you turn up contrast in an image really high, like they've done here. Um, this is raw, by the way. It's just a straight clip, enlarged. Um, so you can see all the, the different colours coming out. That's where the contrast has pushed the colour contrast out, right? So that's been enhanced by NASA, JPL, right? And let's, let's do native with that. There it is. You can see it's got a hard edge and it's kind of cylinder shaped. Okay. The shape is a bit enlarged. It looks wider here because when, when you turn up the contrast and brightness on, on an object that's quite bright already, it gets bigger. It grows. It grows like a halo, right? So that distorts the actual shape, if anything, because it's not as bright as that in reality. Okay, so we've got a whole bunch. I'll flick through these again. So there's left, there's right, there's left negative, there's right negative, smaller, left, bigger left, bigger right, 
smaller right. Bright enhance. Now I've darkened this right down. It says rule there, but this has been darkened. Okay. That's how it looks in the actual image. Okay, this is the very super brightened contrast enhanced one that NASA have done. Too bright to look at, in fact. It's actually easier if we go back like this to look at it. So, now what's strange about this is that people are saying it's long exposure. I don't think these are long exposure. I think the reason it's elongated is because it's traveling quickly. Now, if you look at the actual page, normally when we have a set of images like this, and I've shown this many, many times before, so I, I, I've got a lot of experience with these images going back many, many years. Uh, normally in a set, you would have the, the last image and the first image would be down here in the set, right? Let's go to the bottom one here. Now this is the first one. The time is 21, 33, 39. Now let's go to the last one in that dark set, 21, 33, 39. So all these were taken in one second, under one second, just under. So this is a burst fire set. Now, if you've got a proper camera, like I have, and I know many of you have, you'll have a, a, a burst fire setting where it will take a whole bunch of images extremely fast in a row. Okay, it's called burst fire. These were taken in burst fire mode, which is why the first and the last one of the 16 have the same timestamp. Now, normally with the nav cam or the mass cam or any of the other cameras, when you have a set like this, they would have a different time between the first one, the second one, third one, and so on. Okay, usually a few seconds apart, sometimes only half a second apart or something like that. But generally, um, as I've shown in previous videos, like I've got here on my channel, um, this one here, Mars Rod UFOs, night flying objects, and also this one, Mars Giant Rod UFO. Now that's actually Phobos, right? And in this, you can see Phobos moving quite quickly through the sky. But that's, those are long exposure. Now those are taken about three seconds apart, those images, right? Above the crater and um, this was taken by the Curiosity rover in fact this one um, and they're taking a good two some are taken two seconds apart and some taken three seconds apart in each set but what happens then is is that uh, an ovoid object like Phobos would then appear as a streak like a, a, a rod okay so that's what happens when you're taking pictures of moving objects in the night sky, you turn up the exposure time to capture the light, because obviously it's very dark, right? And then you end up with streaking, so objects then stretch. But the crazy thing with this um, particular thing is that it's already quite long. It's not like Phobos, which is kind of potato shaped, but in reality it's probably about half as long as this, right? Now, if you look at some of the other things I've got, now check me out on, on Twitter if, you, if you're not following me already, um, at Artanian TV on Twitter. I've got a load of interesting stuff here. Here's my, my images that I posted last night. As soon as they came up, I posted them. 35,000 views so far on these. And loads of people are actually stealing these images and then sharing them or cropping them and then sharing them, but that's fine. Um, they're raw, so I have they don't I don't own the images if they're raw. If I enhance them, then I own them. Okay, <laughs> that's how copyright works. But they are free to use. Okay, in this state anyway. And um, other people have been posting stuff. Now I would also recommend that a lot of you check out John Ward. J e a n w a r d. John Ward. Um, check out his channel on YouTube. And check him out on Twitter as well. He's been posting some really cool stuff for years. Very good researcher, a friend of mine. And uh, he's been right on top of this and has done a couple of videos about this already. One of them here, this is the latest one he's got. And there are a load of streaks, uh, what looks like a meteor shower following the so-called comet, okay, behind it. But someone else has actually got clips here of the actual comet moving. Um, I'm going to go full screen. Now, check it out. There it is. 
So it looks pretty long here, but of course that's caused by the speed. There it goes. Does that look like a comet to you? No. If it was a comet, it would have a long tail, much longer than that. Comets have tails, and when they get nearer the sun, the tails get longer and more pronounced. Some people are saying that it's not a comet. I, I agree it's not a comet. If It may be some kind of weird asteroid, and all data captured by NASA, NASA's Mars orbiters is not being released. What is being hidden? Now, that may be the case, but the, the, the problem is the Mars orbiters, like um, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, has amazing camera on it, a huge, massive telephoto, telescopic camera, but it's pointing at Mars. It's not pointing up in the sky behind Mars or above it. It's pointing down at the surface. In my opinion, it's the MRO or high-rise camera is unlikely to capture Atlas because it's pointing completely the wrong way. Um, they would have to manoeuvre it and turn it round. Uh, I don't think they're going to want to do that, to be honest. Uh, but we may get pictures of it from other satellites uh, which are above Mars. I'm hoping, anyway. This is an actual photo, apparently, of it. Uh, looks pretty bright here, right? But it doesn't have a long tail like a like a normal comet would have. Normally comets have great big long tails going right back. Underneath in the comments, there's a really cool comment here from Thumars, right? And he's put it into Grok. And this is what Grok has come up with. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. That is what Grok thinks it is. Pretty amazing, right? <laughs> I somewhat doubt that it looks like that in reality, but it's a great animation. So that's what AI, Grok, thinks of it. All it's doing is taking the image data and then kind of processing it and elaborating on what it thinks it might be. Now, of course, in reality, it wouldn't look like that, I don't think, but who knows? So thanks to Thumars for posting that comment. That's really, really cool. And if there are 16 photographs taken in under a second, these are not long exposure at all. They're short exposure. And uh, that's why it shows up rather grey like this and not very bright. It's because it's not long exposure. If this was longer exposure, this would appear really bright. Like some of the images I showed in these videos here, the rod UFOs, that I did a while back, okay? They appear super bright because the, the images are longer exposure and the, the longer the exposure, the more light you take in and the brighter the objects appear, okay? Now, I'm just going to show you a bunch of the UFOs that I've shown recently. Now, sometimes they come right up to the rovers and some of them are shaped in a very similar kind of cigar shape or tube or cylinder shape, okay? Some of them look like that, like the one we were looking at today. It's cylinder shaped. It doesn't look like a comet. It doesn't have a long, bright tail like comets do. It's a solid object. It may actually just be a meteor, but it's very uniform, which is highly unusual, I would say. But here are some of the, the pictures I've shown recently. Now, this is the Rod UFO. This is actually Phobos, like I said. And what happens is Phobos is actually ovoid shaped, kind of potato shaped. And when you take a long exposure photograph at night, like this is, it becomes very bright and elongated because these images were two or three seconds, okay? So it's stretched. So that's the stretching you get when you take photographs at night with long exposure. It's got the same time here on the first one and the last one. These were taken all in under a second. So they're not long exposure. So the stretching isn't due to long exposure. The stretching is due to speed. Now, this may well be a comet, okay? Who knows? But this is quite low down. Gale Crater, Curiosity Rover. What the hell's that? Does that look like a comet? No. Does it look like a meteor? No. Is it a lens flare? No, it's way too sharp to be a lens flare. Lens flares are much more fuzzy and kind of vague. They're never this sharp. Now, this was spotted years ago by Steve Bolden, and I still think he's one of the best clips ever from Mars. Now, this is also Curiosity Rover. This is small, and it came in very close and very low to the rover, and only appeared for a matter of a fraction of a second. 
because it flew right in front of the camera, very close to it. So this is tiny. This is about the size of a mosquito or some kind of insect, flying insect. But if you look at the back here, on the, on the right, you've got what looks like an abdomen hanging down with a sting on the end, like a mozzie. That kind of thing, maybe. And in low-resolution photographs with things moving like this very close and quickly, the wings wouldn't show, but there is distortion just above it, as if there are wings above it which are translucent. What it may be is actually uh, a dead insect that's just being blown by the wind. And then there's stuff like this, which I still think is the most astonishing image of a UFO on Mars. Now, this came in right towards the rover within about 150 feet or so of the rover. Well, at least the image, it's, it may have come closer, but it went past the cameras. And the, the rover does have a kind of blind spot, which is above the rover. It has loads of cameras and they're all pointing outwards and downwards. This is, I estimate, somewhere between 10 and 20 feet in diameter across wingspan. This is a drone or something. It's not a bird. You can see this hard edge sticking up like a little tail stabilizer or something there sticking up. Now this was a lot further away and is one of the ones I call interceptors because they seem to have big aerials on them. Now sometimes these aerials are hanging down and sometimes they're sticking up like this one, right? And in the negative you can really see it there. There's like an aerial sticking up with a little ball on the end. So that was 4131. This is 3828. So this was taken months earlier. And this is the same object but up the other way from behind. And the aerial on this one if it is an aerial, it's hanging down, okay? Let's go back a bit so you can see it better. If you get too close to these, they blur out, okay? So concentrate on the one here, up on the right, right corner. You can see this thing hanging down. I think this is the same object with the aerial hanging down, right? Now these are coming right up to the rover. This is similar, this one here, to the thing we're looking at today. It's not a comet. It's what I call a rod UFO, and it's just above this kind of little mountainous part here. Now, how high up is that? Probably less than 200 feet high. Okay. It's fairly well defined in the image. In other words, it's quite dark. If this was much higher up and further away, it'd be much more grey and less pronounced. This is raw, by the way. So you can tell that that isn't that far away by the luminosity. If it was miles and miles up, it would be tiny and it would be a pale, much paler grey colour. This is one of my favourites. This is a cigar shaped UFO and there are small drones coming out the end of it here. You can actually see in the negative here. There's one here and one here. This is the raw clip. It's much darker in the raw clip and you can see it's kind of like a I call it the ink pen. It's like, shaped like an ink pen. And it has these blobs coming out the end, which are small drones. Absolutely insane. So there's lots of activity going on here. Keep your screens clean and your eyes keen. Okay. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.